آپ نے مجھے لنک کر دیا ضیاء الحق کے ساتھ یعنی آئیڈینٹی بینگ فورسڈ آن سم ون آئی واز ناٹ اگینسٹ جنرل مشرف آئی ایمپتھائز ود ہیم فائنلی اینڈ تماشا ایٹ لال مسجد سم ون ان انٹیلیجنس ایجنسی میں ہیو بین لسننگ اینڈ دے سیڈ دس شہزاد غیاس از اے ویری مسچیوس مین ہی از آسکنگ Uh, inflict on your innocent listeners or viewers g please go ahead g g say let's just jump straight into it aapki kitabein to sab logo ne padhi hi hongi pakistaniyat i mean i wouldn't be remiss to say ke you're almost like a cultural ambassador for pakistan to sir zara ek sawal ye aata hai ke pakistaniyat define karne ki itni zarurat kya hai i mean if bollywood is exporting Uh, if india is exporting bollywood everywhere if america is exporting american television everywhere they don't they're not necessarily defining what americanism is what indianism is to hame itni pakistaniyat ko ek define karne ki uh, is there a necessity uh ji there is a necessity or i humbly disagree with the contention that bollywood and hollywood do not export uh, americanism or indianism without calling it that mane america ka jo matan hota hai media ka bada uska hissa america ki shinakht america ka claimed kirdar uski khubiyan aur to be fair to them unki khamiyan khamiyon ko bhi wo portray karte hain so american character american persona امریکہ کیا ہے یہ تو ایک بہت بھاری وزنی حصہ ہے ان کے ابلاغ عامہ کا اور یہ شاید نہ معلوم ہو لیکن بغیر امریکہ کی حکومت ریاست ان کی افواج بالخصوص ان کی افواج اس کی افواج کے تعاون کے بغیر ناممکن ہے کہ امریکہ کا ہالی ووڈ اپنی ٹیلی ویژن سیریلز بنائے اور سنیما میں ایکسپورٹ کرے اپنے فلم تو بہت گہرا تعلق ہے امیریکنزم کا اور جو ایکسپورٹ کرتے ہیں اور انڈیا کا بھی یہی حال ہے انڈیا کی کئی فلموں میں ایک بڑی رینک شوونزم دوسروں کو چھوٹا بتانا انڈیا کو بڑھا چڑھا کر بتانا انڈیا پر فخر کرنا جو کہ ہر قوم اور ریاست کا حق ہے انڈیا کبھی اس سے کھچکچاہٹ نہیں کرتا تو اس میں پاکستان اگر پاکستان سے پاکستانیت کی بات کی جائے ایک اور بھاری وجہ یہ ہے کہ پاکستان ایک لفظ کے طور پر بھی ایک بہت نیا لفظ ہے دیکھیے انڈیا کا لفظ ایک علاقے کے اعتبار سے کئی صدیوں سے انڈیا کہا جاتا ہے بھارت کہا جاتا ہے انڈیا کا امریکہ جب سے امیریگو دی ویسپوچی کو یہ کریڈٹ دیا گیا کہ وہ کولمبس کے علاوہ وہ تھا شخص جس نے جا کر کوسٹ لائن کو ڈی مارکیٹ کیا تھا اور کسی نقشے بنانے والے نے یورپ میں وہ جب نقشہ چھاپا تو اس نے اس کا نام دے دیا امیریکا تو امیریکا کا لفظ پانچ سو چھ سو سال سے سب کو پتا ہے پاکستان کا لفظ ایک ننا منا لفظ ہے اس کا ایجاد ہوا 1933 میں ایک سو سال سے کم اس کی عمر ہے اور ملک بنے ہوئے تو صرف پچہتر سال بھی پورے نہیں ہوئے لہذا پاکستانیت کو فروغ کرنا اس کو مقبول کرنا اس کے نام کو پھیلانا ایک طرف ضروری اور دوسری طرف پاکستان کے نام کو ایک بڑے منفی طور پر ذرائع ابلاغ میں دیکھا جاتا ہے کچھ ہماری اپنی غلطیوں کی وجہ سے اپنی غلط حرکتوں کی وجہ سے لیکن بڑی حد تک 
میڈیا کی نوعیت یہ ہے کہ وہ بری خبر پہ زیادہ توجہ دیتے ہیں اور بری خبر زیادہ سنسنی خیز سمجھی جاتی ہے اور ہم نے کوشش زیادہ نہیں کی کہ ہماری جو تخلیقی صلاحیتیں ہیں علاوہ کرکٹ فیلڈ کے کبھی کبھی ہم نے بڑے اچھے موسیقار بڑے شاعر بہت ادب کے بڑے بہترین شخصیات ہم نے پیدا ضرور کیے لیکن ہم نے وہ اس میں سرمایہ نہیں لگایا ان کو پروجیکٹ کرنے کہ پاکستان میں صرف دہشت گردی یا انتہا پسندی نہیں بلکہ پاکستان میں کئی مثبت پہلو ہیں پاکستانی شخصیت کے تو اسی لیے پاکستانیت کے تصور کو سامنے رکھتے ہوئے میں نے اپنی کتاب میں کوشش کی ہے کہ تیس ہماری جو مثبت پہلو ہیں تھرٹی پازیٹیو ایسپیکٹس آف پاکستانی ایوریج پاکستانی اینڈ الیون نگیٹو ایلیمنٹ ہم نے یہ نہیں کہا ہے پاکستانیت میں سب آپ جیسے غیاس صاحب جیسے فرشتے موجود ہیں پاکستان میں پاکستان میں ہم جیسے برے لوگ بھی رہتے ہیں یا کچھ ہماری عادتیں بری ہیں انتہا پسندی ہے بعض لوگوں میں اور کچھ بد اخلاقی ہے پبلک پلیسز میں ہم مس بیہیو کرتے ہیں کچرا پھینکنے کا ہمیں بہت شوق ہے بچے پیدا کرنے کا بہت شوق ہے بغیر اس کو دیکھے کہ بچوں کو تعلیم اور صحت سو بغیرہ وغیرہ تو پاکستانیت ایک مجسمہ ہے حقیقتوں کا شناخت ہے سر آئی تھنک میں شاید سمجھانے میں میں تھوڑی غلطی کر دی میرا مقصد یہی تھا کہ امیرکا جو امیرکنزم ایکسپورٹ کرتا ہے وہ موویاں بنا کے ڈرامے بنا کے کرتا ہے یا انڈیا بالی ووڈ بنا کے کرتا ہے اگر عرفان جی نے جو ولاگس بنا رہے ہیں نصرت فتح علی خان قوالی گا رہے ہیں دیز آر بریلینٹ ایکسپورٹ وچ وی شوڈ پروجیکٹ بٹ وی اسٹل ہیو دس انسیسڈ نیڈ آف کریٹنگ اے باکس اینڈ آپ کی کتاب میں بھی آپ تو پورے پاکستان میں ٹریول کر چکے ہیں آپ کے آبزرویشن ہیں آپ کو مجھ سے کئی زیادہ پتا ہوگا بٹ ہم جب یہ باکس بنا دیتے ہیں دیٹ دس از واٹ اٹ مینس ٹو بی پاکستان یوزلی واٹ از ان دیٹ باکس از ناٹ ڈیفائنڈ ہاؤ دیٹ از ڈیفائنڈ از ان این ایکسکلوژنری وے ہو از آؤٹ سائڈ دس باکس کہ دس از اینٹی پاکستان یہ پاکستان کے کلچر کے خلاف ہے دیٹس یوزلی ہاؤ اٹ از یوز ان پاپولر ڈسکورس اینڈ اٹس یوز ٹو لیبل پیپل اینڈ لیبل سرٹن کلچرز اور سرٹن آئیڈیاز as being anti pakistan as opposed to using it as a way of making things pro pakistan but those that must be done by some people uh, it's certainly not done by me because aap to is waqt galti se mujhe mujhe daawat di hai na aapne mujhe aapne apne aap ko zehmat di hai mujhse baat karne ki to aap is par itminan rakhein کہ میں کسی کو ایکسکلوڈ نہیں کرتا اپنے پاکستانیت کے تصور میں اگر دوسرے کریں تو وہ ان کی خوشی ہے یا ان کی بد قسمتی ہے اور یہ ایکسکلوڈ کرنے والی بات میرے دوست غیاس صاحب ذرا یاد رکھیں امیرکا نے تو اس کو برانڈ بنایا ہوا ہے امیرکن ایکسپشنلزم وہ انگریزی میں کہتے ہیں ایکسپشنلزم ہائے 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 امریکہ اتنا زبردست ملک ہے کہ کوئی اور ملک اس کے مقابل نہیں ہو سکتا تو وہ ہے اصل ایکسکلوزیوزم وہ کہتے ہیں کہ جی ہم ہی ہیں کیونکہ ہمارے پاس اٹلانٹک اوشن بھی ہے پیسیفک اوشن بھی ہے اور ہم تو ایک اپنے تیس مار خان ہیں کوئی ہمارے قریب نہیں آ سکتا جسمانی طور پر اور بڑی حد تک درست ہے بہت ہی تفریحی اور انوینٹو اور ایڈونچرس سوسائٹی ہے امریکہ کی اس کی کئی خوبیاں ہیں لیکن کئی خامیاں بھی ہیں تو ایکسکلوزو ہونا یہ تو ہر قوم کی یہ ایک بنیادی ناگزیر ضرورت ہے نا ایوری لائک اے ہیومن آئیڈینٹی یو ایز اے شہزاد ریاض صاحب ڈز ناٹ وانٹ ٹو بی مسٹیکن فار محبت خان ایون دو لفظ محبت آپ ضرور کرتے ہوں گے محبت کسی نہ کسی سے لیکن یو آر یو 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 ڈونٹ وانٹ ٹو بی مسٹیکن فار سمن ایلس So, ہم ہم رہ رہے ہیں ایک ایسے دور میں دنیا کی تاریخ میں جہاں قبائل سے خاندانوں سے بادشاہتوں سے فار دا موسٹ پارٹ بادشاہوں بادشاہتوں سے آگے بڑھ کر ہم قومی ریاستیں بن گئے ہیں ایک دو سو تین سو سال کے بعد ہو سکتا ہے قومی ریاستوں کی جگہ کوئی اور تنظیمی یونٹ پیدا ہو ہاں 
सारे दुनिया के डॉक्टर्स मिलकर कहे जी हम एक अपने कौमी रियासत बनाएंगे जिसके शहरी सिर्फ मेडिकल डॉक्टर्स होंगे या आईटी स्पेशलिस्ट होंगे वी डोंट नो व्हाट द फ्यूचर विल ब्रिंग एट दिस स्टेज इन ह्यूमन हिस्ट्री नेशन स्टेट्स आर द बेसिस ऑन विच ह्यूमन बीइंग्स हैव डिसाइडेड टू लिव टुगेदर तो ये नागुजीर है इट इज अनअवॉइडेबल दैट यू असर्ट योर आइडेंटिटी बट डू इट इन अ वे दैट ऑल्सो रिस्पेक्ट अदर पीपल तो हमारी जो किताब है पाकिस्तानियत क्या है इसमें मैंने इस बात पे जोर दिया है कि आप ये ना समझें कि जी दूसरे कौम हमसे कम है हम क्योंकि मुसलमान हैं 97 परसेंट मैं तो इस हद तक जाकर मैंने कहा है असल ओरिजिनल पाकिस्तानीज द फर्स्ट पाकिस्तानीज आर हिंदू पाकिस्तानी बुद्धिस्ट पाकिस्तानी जैन पाकिस्तानी इवन क्रिश्चियन पाकिस्तानी क्योंकि इनके दीन इनके मजाहब इनकी जमीन पहले से मौजूद थी इसके कबल कि हम मुसलमान यहां आकर बसे या दूसरों को बनाया मुसलमान तो आ, मेरा जो तस्वुर है पाकिस्तानियत के बारे में वो एक इंक्लूसिव है एक्सक्लूसिव नहीं है एक्सक्लूसिव से उस हद तक है कि मैं अपने आप को डिफाइन करना चाहता हूं कि एज ए नेशनल सिटीजन आई एम प्राउड ऑफ बीइंग ए पाकिस्तान फिर मैं आपकी किताब के तो बिल्कुल जिक्र नहीं कर रहा था मैं एक जनरल बात कर रहा था मेरी तो मोहब्बत भी एक्सेप्शनल है जिससे मैं मोहब्बत करता हूं वो मुझे एक्सेप्शन बना देती है तो, <laughs> तो मेरे तो अलग मसले हैं बट अमेरिकन एक्सेप्शनलिज्म इज अगेंस्ट द वर्ल्ड के हम सबसे अच्छे हैं और हम दुनिया में अच्छे हैं मसले ये पाकिस्तान में अक्सर हम आपस में ही लड़ते रहते हैं एंड यू आल्सो स्पोकन अबाउट इट और जो आपने कौमी रियासत की बात की आई थिंक पिछले हफ्ते आपकी डॉक्टर नुमान नकवी से इस पे काफी डिटेल बात हुई है तो मैं उसमें नहीं पढ़ूंगा कि हाउ द आइडिया ऑफ द नेशन स्टेट्स इज आल्सो क्वाइट रीसेंट इट्स ऑल्सो क्वाइट नेसियंट एंड यू ऑल्सो सेट के वी माइट प्रोग्रेस आउट ऑफ दैट बट सर क्योंकि आप जयाल हक के टाइम में सेनेटर भी थे uh, आप मुशरफ के टाइम में इन्फॉर्मेशन सेक्रेटरी भी थे तो ये जो एक एफर्ट है कि फर्स्ट पाकिस्तानी उन्होंने मोहम्मद बिन कासिम को डिफाइन किया कि पाकिस्तानियत क्या है उसको डिफाइन करना एक स्टेट का प्रोगेटिव बनाया तो कि आपकी बात मैं नहीं कर रहा बट एज अ स्टेट प्रोगेटिव आप जयाल के टाइम में सेनेटर भी थे एक स्टेट का नैरेटिव बना ना क्योंकि वी हैड जस्ट लॉस्ट बांग्लादेश कि हम डिफाइन करें पाकिस्तान क्या होता है एंड सर्टन टाइम्स इट वाज डेफिनेटली डन एट द एक्सपेंस ऑफ एथनिक आइडेंटिटीज और लोकल कल्चरल आइडेंटिटीज बिकॉज जहां वो क्लैश होते थे द आइडिया वॉज यूर पाकिस्तानी फर्स्ट एंड बलोद सेकेंड इवन दो दोज आइडेंटिटीज नेसेसरली आर नॉट इन ऑपोजिशन टू इच अदर बट द स्टेट चूज टू डिफाइन इट एज सच Maybe yeah, uh, that's a phase. I let me clarify. आपने मुझे लिंक कर दिया जियाउल हक के साथ याद रहे कि I was elected as an independent technocrat on a competitive basis in March 1985, where the elections were held on a non-party basis. I was not in politics before that. I was elected on a reserved seat for technocrats, but. i had to go and get votes from the members of the 10 provincial assembly so it was uh, uh, an election that i contested against some party based people also because even though officially it was a non party based election parties like the jamaat e islami some wings of the muslim league some wings of jui uh, led by maulvi samiul haq and others did participate so it was a curious hodge podge and during my term of 6 years uh, there was the crash that killed ziaul haq but even before he left i was a part of the opposition to general ziaul haq there were just about eight of us in the senate who did not join the official parliamentary group led by prime minister junaid and my speeches are on record in the senate where i asked for the lifting of martial law for the return of party based election while i was in that uh, senate elected on a non party basis we held an our own independent opposition group in which fakhar imam sayyid abida hussain sardar asif ali others air marshal noor khan we were all part of this opposition to ziaul haq so 
being a senator in Ziaul Haq's time did not mean that I endorsed Ziaul Haq's uh, policies in Toto. Some of those policies, incidentally, were very good policies, which are difficult to acknowledge because he was a military dictator and he did a lot of wrong work. But he didn't make a Senate role to make a lot of more. He made it possible for the Senate to discuss the budget and give its opinion. It also made it possible the constitutional amendments that he forced through martial law made it possible for the Senate to initiate amendments to the Constitution, which had not previously been done. And he also increased the composition, the strength of the Senate, as did General Musharraf later. So, now coming to the other part of your question, okay, whether it has been deliberately forced, forcibly imposed, yes, some part of the state system uh, did attempt to force a uniform identity. But you should remember about this, Yad Rakhna Chahiye, Diyaz Sahib, that the Pakistan was very annoying and is. And this country has never been made in the history of the with two wings separated by a thousand miles, no commonality of ethnicity and language, united by religion, but divided by many other things, including a very hostile neighbor who did not want both wings to exist. So, we wanted to assert our identity from the beginning. And it was, a big blow was built, was dealt to the unity in 1971. But the concept of Muslim nationalism survived both in Pakistan and in Bangladesh. Bangladesh didn't say, Ki ji, ab now I want to go back to my ethnic roots in West Bengal or in India. Bangladesh is proud to be a Muslim country today. In the Article 2A of the Constitution of Bangladesh says, the state religion of Bangladesh shall be Islam, and other religions will also be given the state. So, in Pakistan's case, after 71, we felt we needed to reassert our identity. But I think with the 18th Amendment, there is now a consensus in the state, whether it is civil or military, that the provinces have a major role to play in shaping national identity and national affairs and resources. The center is still powerful, but look at the enormous amount of authority and power that has now been given to the provinces. So uh, it, there is now an accommodative approach rather than an exclusivist approach that Pakistani I don't want to keep returning to my book, but both books, Pakistan, Unique Origins, Unique Destiny, and What is Pakistani? I have said that there is no contradiction between being proud of being a Brahvi speaking Baloch and being a Pakistani. That is why thousands of Baloch are joining the Pakistan army and they remain Baloch. They don't change their name. Koi Mari hai, so koi Mengal hai, koi So eventually, it takes time for national identities to emerge. Aap dekhe, in India, in Northeast, ke chhe, states, mein, kitni refusal hai to accept a monolithic Indian uh, identity. They say, no, we want to be uh, Mizoram, we want to be Assamese, we want to be Meghalaya, the other states of the Northeast. The Naxalites in India, who have been fighting the Indian state system for over 40 years, in, at one time they were in 200 out of 800 districts in India, and they reject the concept of an Indian identity. So, each nation state deals with this subject in its own context and experience. And mashallah, I think we have accommodated diversity as a principle, fundamental principle of our uh, being and of our constitution. Sir, I think it was philosophical our disagreement that history, uh, the incidentality of history or the inevitability of history. My idea is that I think nation states are incidental. जरूरी नहीं है कि inevitable था कि पाकिस्तान की boundary यही होती वो काबुल इधर होता या पिशावर इधर होता वो British borders जहाँ तक आए once you formed a nation state I think rather than forcing 
डाउन द आइडिया कि एक हम हमेशा से एक अलग कॉम थे इट्स मोर अबाउट वॉट यू कैन गिव दिटीजन सो राइट ना इफ यू आर टू पिच टू कश्मीर कि कश्मीर आप पाकिस्तान का हिस्सा बने हैं हम कॉमन कश्मीरियों से बात करें राधर देन सेंग कि आप तो हिस्टोरिकली हमारी आइडेंटिटी ये सारे मैच करते हैं आई थिंक वी शुड ऑफर समथिंग टू देम एज सिटीजन कि इफ यू ज्वाइन पाकिस्तान दिस इज द नेशन स्टेट this is what we offer to our citizens and i feel that's a much better sell for pakistan than this idea that all of us who live here have always existed in a singular identity and this forming of this country was inevitable because of that identity uh well i mean there is no harm in deriving some strength and comfort from history there has been a commonality of territory and of being adjacent to each other punjabis have lived next to saraiki speaking people pashtuns have lived next to baloch it is us people like me who have migrated from madras or hyderabad deccan or from the upper you know uh, up the uttar pradesh areas into pakistan and have adopted this soil so if there is a sense of historic continuity in being part of a land which has spawned the civilizations of harappa or texel or mohenjodaro or mehargarh and from that a logic arises ke bhai if we have lived here in this territory you can't have a nation without territory you can't have identity without some sense of what land do you belong to so uh, affirming that it uh, is not in any way meant to negate something else and i don't see why there is this constant concern about pakistan being uh, pakistaniyat or pakistani identity being forced on someone i i have yet to meet people i work in uh, on my voluntary capacity in villages and settlements and communities in all four provinces i travel widely uh, and i don't find Uh, them resenting this now they may have resented it earlier when there was a very strong a uh, dissident insurgent movement in balochistan and some of it still exists but i find there is a willingness to assert baloch identity and accept pakistani state identity so i think it is a question of contestation and uh, evolution and this process will continue it is not going to end very soon we are not an ethnic nation we are a very pluralist nation so it will take us about 2 300 years more to reach a stage where we think we are ethnically also more homogeneous like i mean that's one extreme i'm giving you an extreme of china or turkey there has been a turkish race with sub races within that turkish race for centuries there has never been a pakistani race so we are going to evolve towards that step as we intermarry and there's so many intermarriages now taking place through migration from rural to urban areas from one province to another province so it's a process of history and each nation evolves and changes according to its own dynamics it i don't think ethnic homogeneity is something to aspire towards for a final solution lag raha hai and i'm not saying ki aap ye keh rahe hain i think it's Fine. just how we define ethnicity ek texan ki ethnicity ek new yorker se different hai aap shayad dono se mile ek jo alabama se hai ya jo ek jo dc se hai wo alag insaan lagenge but dono hi kahin na kahin american hai i don't think rejection is necessarily insurgency matlab agar ptm hai ek ya gawadar mein is waqt thousands of people are protesting it doesn't have to be insurgency it can be something as simple as the language no, no. i didn't call that insurgency i didn't call the gawadar movement any i don't call the gawadar movement insurgency at all it's a very healthy sign that they can they want to protest and they are protesting no one is stopping them from protesting and therefore the insurgency is something else it is taking up arms to enforce your vision of what you want pakistan to be and that goes against the norm of every state whether it is america or whether it is pakistan no state accepts the use of violence 
Uh, Jack, well, Jack. Other, if other people want to use arms against the state, the state has a duty to respond. With, it is supposed to be the only legitimate user of violence. So, anyway, but Balochistan. I am not saying that, sir. You have said that insurgency is not necessary. I am saying that insurgency is not necessary. वो जो कंटेस्टेशन है कि हमारी आइडेंटिटी क्या है आई डोंट थिंक इट नीड्स टू नेसेसरली मैनिफेस्ट इटसेल्फ इन इंसर्जेंसी इवन अगर क्लैशेस एथनिकली या कल्चरली या लैंग्वेज इशू पे भी हो रहे हैं आपने आर्म्स की बिल्कुल अच्छी बात की बट इट्स जस्ट अ लिटिल अनफॉर्चूनेट के दो ग्रुप्स जिन्होंने आर्म्स उठाए हैं और रिट ऑफ द स्टेट चैलेंज की है दोज आर एक्सेप्टेड दोज वी आर नेगोशिएटिंग विद वेयर एज पीपल जो पीसफुली मांग रहे हैं अपने हक उन पे हम वायलेंस कर रहे हैं आई एग्री आई टोटली I condemn that. I condemn. I condemn the uh, attempt to negotiate with uh, movements like the TLP and the TTP. We should be staring them down. We should be using the writ of the state, and we can. The people are far ahead of what the state does. And I wish you know. Look at the way uh, Brigadier then Brigadier Azam Khan in 1953. when he was asked to tackle the anti khadiani agitation in lahore which had not been dealt with effectively by the local civil administration as the munir commission report reveals it says this could easily have been controlled at a local level without having to call in the army but when the army was called in azam khan took one look at it and he decided to declare martial law and he crushed that movement right there and then at least temporarily later again it emerged and the political leadership allowed it to emerge and maybe even the military leadership allowed it to grow but i'm just saying in pakistan when the state acts with firmness it shows it has demonstrated the capacity to quell uh, challenges that undermine the state itself uh, we did it in swat we did it in even in lal masjid however belated it was a uh, musharraf's order to finally end the uh, the the tamasha at lal masjid proved to be effective the state did act it should have acted long much earlier so anyway yeah i hope I, we live and we learn okay. i i i think it's just how we define effective yeah maybe temporarily usne solve kar diya lekin lal masjid ki jo humne price Key because of that military solution. I think uh, obviously militaries are trained to think militarily, of think of people as the enemy. जब वो अपनी country में employ होते हैं उस तरह से और उसको quash करने की कोशिश करते हैं. Long term, I do feel sir, उसके repercussions बुरे होते हैं. That's my opinion. I know, but but there was no other way at that time. How could you tolerate and accept the use of a place of worship to threaten? citizens of china who were working in various establishments there and accused them of prostitution kidnapped them and threatened shopkeepers i mean there, there was no scope for negotiation attempts were made to negotiate with them but when they refused to accept reason refused to lay down arms the state had to act and the military acts in any state why pick out pakistan as the only example i mean Uh, what happened in the golden temple in amritsar the indian military acted against the sikhs and took control of the golden temple and that happened throughout kashmir happens in the northeast so everywhere bhai the state has a license to act when you defy the basic norms of conduct and yes the state itself is capable of hypocrisy and of compromising and of not हम आजाद है हम अपना मुल्क बनाएंगे नेशनल गार्ड भी आएगा मिलिट्री भी आएगी बट व्हाइट हाउस उनको भेजेगा सो दिलिट्री एंड मिलिट्री फोर्सेज आर अंडर द स्टेट हमारी फोर्सेज जरा over the state hai to wahan pe ek masla aa jata hai the courts exist of course anything that goes against the state aap court leke jaye even jo missing persons ka issue hai agar koi ghaddar hai koi agent hai courts exist karte hain ghayab kar dena aur phir apni apni taraf se aapko jo justice lagta hai wo dena ye galat baat hai pakistan mein absolutely galat hai i i absolutely i do not support in any form 
the idea of removing a person because he is either anti-state or he is conducting activities which have to be checked. Uh, we know that our judicial process, our legal process is interminable. It takes too long. Sometimes it is not possible to give the evidence that we know could possibly condemn or convict a person. But I am totally against the practice of removing individuals, torturing them either in police thanas or in centers that may be under the control of the military's agencies. I do not support such actions. And I think over a period of time, the military is also recognizing the fallout, the negative fallout from this is much worse than any gains that might be made by uh, getting hold of a few people to interrogate them or question them. They, of course, do not admit it. No secret agency or intelligence agency ever admits in public what it does under cover. Now, this is a cardinal rule of all intelligence agencies across the world. The CIA didn't admit to the torture that it was inflicting in Iraq or what it has done in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And look at that lady who has been given 86 years in New York for attempting to attempting to shoot at a soldier. I mean, that doctor, she, she has been given 86 years. Uh, what a travesty of justice. You were talking about a country where the courts are supposed to be superior. I'm sorry, the miscarriages of justice, even in a civil-dominated political system like America, are so numerous. The miscarriages of justice, especially against black people, especially against those who are not part of the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant mainstream. So this is a, a global human crisis of governance. How do you distribute power equitably? How is power used vis-a-vis uh, -vis a citizen, vis-a-vis -vis dissident groups? Uh, so this is a continuous challenge. It, it embraces one-party states like China, and it embraces uh, multi-party democracies like the United States or countries even in Europe and elsewhere. America is an imperialist uh, state. Israel ko bhi wo support karta hai, sab ki usko bar bar yet Israel ki nazar aati hai. But wo dunia bhar pe bomb maar de. Obama ne ek drone strike kiya tha, jisme ek American mar gaya tha. They've killed yeah. millions in drones. But kyunke ek American yeah. drone strike mein mar gaya tha, that became such a big controversy in the US. So jab American mar ta hai, unka ek alag uh, reaction ho ta hai. Sir, agar aap oh. ite anti-ziaul hakte, so yeh zara ek personal sawal hai. How did you end up as the information minister for General Musharraf then? I was not against General Musharraf. I empathized with him. When he took power and he asked me, I have no regrets. Absolutely. I joined General Musharraf because at that time, Nawaz Sharif was on the verge of declaring himself Amirul Mominin. I was studying the trends that Nawaz Sharif was inflicting on the country. That was a time when Najam Sethi was picked up from his home in January 1999 and taken away by civil intelligence agencies. And uh, I had to appeal to the then chief of army staff, General Musharraf, to ensure that he was not tortured or maltreated because his family reached out to me. That was a time when Maliha Lodhi and Nir Shakilu Rahman were being charged with sedition. I remember marching in the press club procession protesting a civil government's actions against journalists. So. General Musharraf, to my mind, represented the antithesis of General Ziaul Haq. In many ways, he was the opposite of what General Ziaul Haq was. He didn't attempt to impose an obscurantist vision of Islam to the state. And we shared many values. However, after one year of work with him, I began to disagree with his long-term intention. And that is why I decided to resign from his cabinet. Why we remained friends, but even our friendship was affected. For the sake of a friend, you put up with something. I said, no, I'm sorry. You may be a good friend, but I disagree with you. And I disagreed in cabinet. I disagreed uh, with him on a one-on-one. -on -one. So I left. He wanted me to stay on and take another ministry. 
I didn't want to accept an, any other ministry except I would have liked to be his boss, at least on paper, as Minister of Defence. But <laughs> I would, he would have been very uncomfortable with me as Minister of Defence. So I decided to leave. And incidentally, for the record, just as I have written as candidly as I can about my relationship with Benazir Bhutto in my book, But Prime Minister, which of course you have not read, and the second memoir is coming out next month. It is about my working relationship with President Farooq Lagari and Prime Minister Malik Miraj Khalid, the finest uh, political leader I have ever worked with. Uh, and that is called a president, a prime minister, and a party, and our attempt to set up a new party. And the third book should hopefully come out in March or April about my relationship with General Musharraf. And that is called a general in particular. And it will be launched in March or April. So you will get to see how I viewed working with an army general. Uh, it was very uncomfortable. I had to uh, compromise some of my basic notions. Uh, the way I used to speak against uh, uh, the fact of General Ziaul Haq retaining power as chief of army staff and being head of state. On this, I used to specifically oppose. And here I was with uh, uh, General Musharraf, who was chief executive and chief of army staff. So it was a contradiction. And it was not easy for me to accept it, but life sometimes offers you these uh, Rubik's Cube puzzles and you try to deal with them. And uh, I dealt with it because I finally resigned and then I wrote about it while he was in office. I appreciated some of the good things he did and criticized some of the wrong things that he was doing. And that's all a matter of record. I, I think, sorry, I just want to say he introduced, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged to be have been with him when we introduced some of the most radical reforms in Pakistan's history. I'll mention two of them. Number one, the decision to introduce private independent electronic media. I had the privilege of drafting that as I had done earlier for the Malik Miraj Khalid government. And incidentally, a civil political elected government of Nawaz Sharif deliberately did not implement that law. They allowed the ordinance to lapse and they didn't want the monopoly to end. It was a military dictator who allowed independent media to finally come out, number one. Number two, the remarkable increase in the number of reserved seats for women. 33% seats in all local government bodies and 17% seats in the federal and provincial legislatures. And that has not been undone by anyone because it came as part of the local government the concept which we presented, which was also very radical, placing all government departments under an elected Nazim at the district level. And unfortunately, the People's Party government that succeeded him in 2008 undid that progressively and it has not been restored. But those were very visionary reform uh, that were introduced in the first one year of our tenure. But I think just the idea that a man will do good in his benevolence is a conceptually wrong thing. That you are saying that you were afraid that Nawaz Sharif is a man who is a man who is a man who is a तो उनके अगेंस्ट हमने एक और आमिर को सपोर्ट किया जी मुशर्रफ ने दो चार चीजें गलती से अच्छी कर दी होंगी दो चार चीजें बुरी की होंगी बट द आईडिया दैट ही शुड एग्जिस्ट द आईडिया दैट ही शुड हैव द पावर टू बी इन अ प्लेस टू डू दैट व्हाई डोंट वी सपोर्ट सिस्टम्स इन दिस कंट्री व्हिच इंश्योर के द सिस्टम्स प्रोग्रेसिवली मूव टुवर्ड्स अ प्रोग्रेसिव पाकिस्तान राजर देन हिम हैविंग द स्विच आपने चैनल्स की बात की फिर जब उनके अगेंस्ट हुआ तो उन्होंने एक दिन स्विच ऑफ किया वो बंद भी कर दिए कब किया कब किया कब किया एक मिनट एक मिनट तीन हफ्ते तीन हफ्ते के लिए किया यार उसका इतना बड़ा इतना he बड़ा मामला बना दिया टू डू दैट राइट सर यार यस ही हैड द पावर टू डू इट बट डोंट डिसरिगार्ड द फैक्ट दैट फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट मार्च 2002 टू 2008 2007 except for those three weeks of a very major blunder he committed by imposing the emergency in November 2007 and withdrawing it three weeks later, there was no restriction on freedom of speech in media. There was no restriction. 
I mean, there are more restrictions in civil phases than there are there by the use of advertising. Look how advertising has been used to corrupt media between 2008 and today. The figures have come out what happened during Nawaz Sharif's time. Now, I am not saying, uh, you, you know, unfortunately, you misinterpreted it. I have not said that we should legitimize uh, a, a military takeover. The fact is that the military exists. The fact is that something happened in October 1999, which should not have happened. Musharraf and generals decided to come into power. Yes, it should not have happened, but the systems in our country were so vulnerable to majoritarian control, which is the other facet of democracy. Democracy has come to be interpreted as the will of the majority. Okay, Nawaz Sharif had the majority, therefore he had the right to make this law and undo that law. I'm sorry, I beg to disagree. I go back to what I think Albert Camus said so well. Democracy is not about the rule of the majority. Democracy is about protecting the rights of the minority. The minority, not in a religious sense, the political minority. And when I say there was a fear of him becoming Amir ul Mominin, that was the fear of using a majority to steamroll his will through parliament. And that is a danger facing India. It is happening in India very recently since BJP took over. It happens in most democracies. So yes, we need to resist individual ambition or military ambition. The military should never again be part of the political process, overtly or covertly. And I think they are realizing that, and it is very awkward to have a government, for example, currently constantly accused of uh, uh, Kamal. I'm on a I'm check. I think so. You're getting a phone call. Sorry. Uh, Jesus. Sorry. We, there was a there was an interruption in the middle. Uh, can you hear me? Ji, ji, bilkul, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you not Hello? hear me? I, I, can I hear can't you. hear you. I can Sorry. hear you completely fine. I... Check, 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 no, check. I can't hear you. Sir, I'm mind to not get my awkward questions. I think these conversations need to happen. Yes, I'm they not at all, young man. I mean, I'm younger than you, but I mean, I'm quite used to facing awkward questions. I've well, been information. I've been information minister in a military-led government, so you can't be more awkwardly faced than that. I'm asking for love and respect. In case you think I'm not asking, it's only coming from a place of love and respect. Very kind of you. I'm deeply touched and I'm absolutely willing to uh, answer any question that you have, except personal questions. <laughs> so uh, the, I think one should turn the tables Okay. and subject you to some questioning at some point, you know. <laughs> I, there should be an opportunity where all the very innocent characters you have been <laughs> interrogating should be allowed to put you into the chair. <laughs> I think uh, obviously it's much easier for me to sit here and say things that you have done I think given that opportunity, uh, when you're right. faced with two bad choices, <laughs> yes, it's easy for me to say it historically. criticism All he had was bad choices. And I see uh, things he did, why he did it. Uh, so, it's easy to sit here But ye, more than what you did in 2003, I think these conversations are important of for today or what will happen tomorrow. That when we're faced with these bad choices again, maybe people yeah. will learn and make better what? choices. Still bad, but better. Yeah. True. Very right. Very right. Yeah, it's a question of choices that you make and uh, what you, I suppose, learn on a, on in generally humanity has a mixed record of learning from the past. Uh, sometimes humanity has learned some lessons and sometimes humanity and Pakistan included uh, repeats mistakes of the past. So, uh, you know, it's a constant process of learning, struggling overcoming one's inner limitations and uh, prejudices. So uh, this process will continue. I mean, we have to be prepared for that. Yeah. And it's all the perspective. I really admire that you've always been very positive and kind about 
वेर पाकिस्तान इज हेडेड अगर डेंजर साइंस भी आ रहे हैं आई कैन लुक एट अल कोड एंड जस्ट फील लाइक हम कहाँ जा रहे हैं एज अ कंट्री एंड मे बी यू कैन लुक एट इट एंड आई नो यू स्पोकन अबाउट इट के इट्स एन अनॉर्मली दीज थिंग्स डोंट हैपन एवरी सिंगल डे सो इट वुड बी रॉन्ग टू कैटेगराइज और कैरेक्टराइज पाकिस्तान एज दिस इज द सियाल कोड इंसिडेंट डिफाइन्स इट इट्स द सेम इंसिडेंट but how you look at it and what you do with it i think defines you as a person uh, absolutely like every every other citizen of pakistan perhaps except for those religious fanatics who made bizarre qualifying statements including this character molana fazlur rahman i was appalled by the kind of qualified statement he gave saying you know but these uh, you have to see whether the allegation was uh, accurate and sometimes it's very difficult to prove okay i mean some kind of nonsense of that kind i mean i was repelled i was so i was so deeply upset i have written about it and i think don uh, might publish something that i've written on mr jinnah's uh, birth anniversary where i refer to the sial court incident so in case you want to be confused a little you can read that article i think in a couple of days it will appear but yes i reiterate that the vast huge majority of pakistanis and particularly both rural and urban who i at least observe do are not represented by the mob madness that came across in sialkot yet i continue to be disturbed that this virus this virus of bigotry which has been cultivated and spread by the religious political leadership and the purely religious leadership of this country and we have allowed it to flourish has been creeping uh, larger and larger than it has ever received electoral mandate for except the disturbing results of the local government elections in khyber pakhtun khwa i mean does one connect this to the incompetence of party tickets given by pti or or god forbid is it a spill over from what has happened in kabul because is there a synergy between uh, the ideologies of the taliban and the ideology of juif which is far more assimilated into a constitutional process than is the taliban and uh, perhaps a direct comparison may not be wholly accurate but is this a spill over and yes there is one way of saying uh, this is an unavoidable uh, spill out or spill over from what has happened in kabul and i hope that that is not so i hope that this is a temporary phase and that the people of khyber pakhtunkhwa will recognize the error that they have made in electing this party not just for the religious part but also uh, the corrupt aspect the leadership of this party has been associated with corrupt practices and the irony of awarding them a victory against a party which at least has been crusading or campaigning against corruption and has done some good work in khyber pakhtunkhwa i am not a member of pti i said i think uh, sitting outside we can't really judge why people voted how they voted unki ground realities kya hai corrupt practices to juif bhi hai pti bhi hai pml nba ppp bhi hai institutions pe bhi hai wo jo corrupt practices hain wo to entrenched hain civil bureaucracy military har oh. idare mein but but from all the feedback i got i was in peshawar about 2 weeks ago and i interacted with people a fair cross section especially from academia as well as youth as well as uh, senior people brief visit uh, but also i have uh, members of my my colleague members from the voluntary organizations we serve together and uh, there has been discernible uh, change and improvement in the past 4 or 5 years as a result of pti policies the health card is the most obvious I, expression I think, of I, i think jagra has done a brilliant job with the health card but hum jinse bhi baat kare i think wo jab vote karenge they would know better cheeze behtar hui hain i know we only have 3 minutes left isliye main thoda rush bhi kar raha hu agar aapke paas 5 10 minute aur hain to i do want to talk about the documentary you've just made otherwise main aapko phir kabhi zehmat dunga 
five more five more minutes five more minutes okay yeah let's deal with five more minutes because i have to leave for a meeting but please go ahead so i just ask this yeah. one question and then the floor is all yours ke jab hum baat karte hain history se seekhna don't you think hum thoda revisionist history kar rahe hain 1971 ke aapne bhi zikr bhi kiya tha khel khel mein bani hai ek drama bhi ban raha hai aapki documentary bhi aayi hai i know ke in mein se ek do cheeze to ek idare se फंडेड हैं आई डोंट नो इफ द डॉक्यूमेंट्री इज फंडेड बाई देम इज वेल बट अगर इंडिया में गुजरात में रॉ एक डॉक्यूमेंट्री बनाए कि नहीं मोदी तो अच्छा आदमी था वी वुड वी वुड टेक ऑफ सॉल्ट और और विद जस्ट सॉल्ट सो वेन वी टॉक फॉर नाइनटीन सेवेंटी वन इज इन इट बेटर फॉर आर फ्यूचर टू एक नॉलेज द रॉन्ग दैट वी डेड नॉट जस्ट इन सेवेंटी वन बट फोर्टी सेवन टू सेवेंटी वन राधर दैन ट्राइंग टू प्रेजेंट रिविजन हिस्ट्री विच मे सर्व द स्टेट नैरेटिव but would hurt us in the long run and would hurt our relations with other such uh out margins jahan is tarah ki protests ho rahi hain and dar hai aur kachcha hai aur khuda na khasta kabhi aisa ho but bangladesh repeat ho sakta hai uh mr riyas i have been writing on the subject of 1971 in the form of essays uh for about 20 to 25 years my published books my anthologies contain several essays on my precious or unprecious thoughts about 1971 i have written for bangladeshi journals about 1971 and the past and the future of pakistan bangladesh relation on the 40th anniversary of the separation of east pakistan a bangladeshi journal invited me to contribute can i contribute i have recently written columns for the dhaka tribune edited by zafar subhan who is the son of one of the uh, basic uh, partners of sheikh mujib in drafting the six point rehman subhan so this is not coming from a perspective that is eroquially chauvinistically pakistani or led by covert elements in the military or the civil 1971 is a subject of which i have been seized for several years i have given lectures on this at the pakistan institute of international affairs 2 years ago so kindly do not equate this with the conventional view of the liberal and the left segments of our society which says anything anything that has anything positive to say about the state of pakistan or the military has to be sponsored by either isi or ispr i mean we are capable of arriving at conclusions independent of state influence and i have a perspective on this this film is the result of years of thought and specifically when evolution media headed by a woman who has worked with my daughter mehri jabbar for several years iram shahid approached me because she knew that i am also very concerned that the 50th year is coming up and i did a survey i found no film documentary made in pakistan which attempts a in what i think is a balanced picture of what happened why it happened if you know of such a documentary do let me know so i said since i am also a filmmaker instead of writing another book let me attempt a film have you seen the film ni nee, sir aapne invitation ka bol kar mujhe sanu nehr wale pul pe bula ke oh, what a picture but no but it is so simple you go to a website people have been accessing the website sitting in america i am receiving comments from people in london they are viewing it, it the website was announced publicly it is not released commercially but everyone can access it it is www.1971 untoldstory.com what does it show it shows archival material from that period assembled after tremendous effort and research it depicts excerpts from interviews that i conducted with six eminent overseas scholars and journalists ranging from will drummond of the los angeles times who was bureau chief in delhi in 1971 who was an eye witness all the way to professor aisha jalal a pakistani american an eminent intellectual 
We have the Asmin Sekia, who has written about what happened to the women as a result of the conflict in Bangladesh. We have spoken with Professor Ian Talbot, who is a professor of South Asian history in the University of Southampton. We have spoken with scholars from Pakistan, and we have assembled diverse views. We have identified all the major factors. Uh, we have said where the military made basic mistakes, where the leadership, whether it was Ayub Khan, whether it was General Yahya Khan, whether it was civil leadership of Dede Bhutto, whether it was Sheikh Mujib, and most of all, India's covert and then overt role. So kindly see the documentary before you make this judgment about okay, we are attempting to revisit or revise history. History is, a, is in a process of constant revision. History is a mystery. History is the greatest mystery. You read more and more of history, you realize how little one knew of history. So there is no such thing as revisionist history because that implies that whatever has been written previously is like Nozobilla, the word of God, that it can't be revisited. There is no attempt to, uh, you know, to present a, a parrot-like repetition of someone who might want to say this in the military headquarters or the headquarters of the People's Party. This is an independent uh, approach. Please see it. And if you want to suffer another encounter with me about the uh, documentary, I am willing to inflict some suffering on you by answering your questions about the documentary. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 okay. Okay. I didn't know that it was available online. I thought it was the premiere. Uh, but you have to disinvite me. Now it is going to be shown. No, no, no. I don't have much to be entirely inadvertent. No, no, no. I'm also a comedian. So I always talk about this kind of stuff. A sense of humor is... Uh, is essential to survive life. And I'm delighted that you have a, such a good sense of humor. Keep it up. And uh, inshallah, we will meet in under lightning or in rain, as they say. Uh, we will meet soon, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay? Thank you so much, sir, for your time. And a lot of my questions were generally with the state. You don't know why we have made a new state. Because you sort of are a cultural ambassador. You don't have a personal job. We are doing it today. That's why I called you today. And you have talked about this. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Then we will give you a And thank you for listening. Take care. Good afternoon. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot. All the best to you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon.